he was popular on his side and on my side of the projects. Since day one, we clicked. I did what I had to do. And I did it by any means necessary. You know performer and hitmaker Michael Bivens for his time with New Edition and Belle Bib DeVoe, but the story of what got him to where he is now is just as amazing. It's chronicled in the new documentary, The Hustle of 617 Mike Biv. Debuts next week, and he joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing look, great. You look cozy <laughs> and comfortable. <laughs> yes, I'm in the backyard. I had a nice cup of um, hot tea, and I was trying to find the right location. You guys look so beautiful in the studio. I was trying to match the ambiance a little bit. Yeah, you well, know? you're not you're not in Roxbury next to Boston. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not in the bury, baby. I'm in <laughs> Connecticut, but I'll be in the bury tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you guys had some some talent, but you had, I think, a, a bit of a different role as the business guy. At a young age, what did you see and do that maybe your colleagues did not did not get? Well, they were talented at what they were doing, and um, we were all so young. And I guess and when you join the music business, you're excited about your first check. You're excited about being on television. But I guess, you know, watching the money, watching the contracts, watching who you get in business with, I just gravitated to that because I always thought that was one of the most important parts. So I just want to learn as much as I can to protect us and to also keep myself sharp at the same time. You say a lot of people have sought you out because you are – known for helping in the business aspect of this. You say you're inspired by uh, the recently passed Clarence Avant. Well, you know what, Clarence, Clarence was the, like, he was the uh, the boss of Gerald Busby, who took over after um, Barry Gordy from Motown. And Gerald Busby was my godfather. So it went from Clarence to Gerald to me. So I retained so much information from the both of them and now they're both gone. So yeah. all of that wisdom that they had is inside of me. And I do find myself picking up the phone and talking to other artists or actors and just giving them words of advice and helping them understand what this whole thing is about. And I do feel a little bit of Clarence in me, and I definitely feel a lot of Gerald in me. So you're dead on with that. And RIP to one of the founders that everybody called, no matter what hour, he was always there to help and to get you out of something or to fix something that was wrong. Of course, you guys had a lot of disadvantages uh, growing up in Roxbury. What had the, the biggest impact on you as a kid that gave you this amazing insight to, to propel forward in, in a tip, difficult business? Well, I, I was a street ball basketball player, so I was constantly in the neighborhood and seeing things that most kids wouldn't see. And it teaches you how to survive. You know, you have to understand where to be and you have to understand where not to be. That's just the part of being in the streets. But my mother was such a strong backbone that although I lived in Orchard Park projects, I got bused to Belmont, a suburb of Boston, which was predominantly a 80 percent white school, maybe 18 black kids on the bus. So I had the opportunity to get two different levels of life all in one day. Yeah. I would leave the hood. I would go get great schooling. Where in Roxbury, we had a gym. In Belmont, they had a field house. In Roxbury, yeah. we might have just had some ice on the ground. In Belmont, they had a ice hockey rink wow. on the school <laughs> property. So I was able to come back home, right? right? And this is funny. I was able to come back off the bus and say all these big old words and sound all prolific. And my friends would be laughing. They was like, Mike, would you stop trying to be smart? So yeah. it was just <laughs> interesting. But... <laughs> Those teachings, that English, that articulation helped me become the spokesman for the New Edition group. So when we did the interviews, 90% of the time as a kid, I was the one leading the interview, like I'm doing this morning with uh -huh. you guys. So I feel like I'm in my natural seat. This yeah. is beautiful to me. Well, it's a great setting you're in anyway. I thought that was bathrobe, actually. You look fantastic No, it out looks there. great. It is. It, look it's, at it's that. It's cool, but it's not like that red. That red is screaming. I Come love on. it. Come on. I see it. Come on. <laughs> well, the hustle of 617 Mike Biv debuts next Thursday on All Black. Thanks for joining us, yes. Mike. Thanks, Mike. No, thank you for having me. You guys have a great rest of the weekend. Seven days, baby. Let All the right. whole world see it. Chicago's a favorite city. I see you guys the next time I'm in town. Sounds next good. Time. Thanks, Mike.